the hell just happened? Welcome to Kuvulu, the sorcery of copper. In this episode we will talk about the sound level enforcer. It measures the loudness of the environment and if it's too loud it will cut power. This was actually designed for a small club to prevent the DJ from waking up the neighbor. But thanks to the pandemic the dance floor is closed now and the device is not required anymore. But it might still be of interest for some. So here it is. Ready? Go! Step 1. Measuring the volume. To measure the loudness, a microphone should be sufficient. Just record the sound wave using an analog to digital converter and do plenty of complex calculation to extract the envelope and output a number. Or you can use a sound level meter, which already does exactly that. Here we will use the GM1351. You can still find it under numerous brands for around $15. Now we just need to extract this value. Step 2. Connecting to the meter. Looking at the electronics inside the device, we find a microphone, a microcontroller and plenty of other analog components. Maybe it's not that easy to measure the loudness. But this is not our problem anymore. We just need to find a way to retrieve the end result. Ideally, there would just be a digital interface where the microcontroller would set the measurements in a human-readable format. And there are actually test points in the microcontroller. Sadly, this is just to flash it and nothing is transmitted there. The microcontroller only sends the value to the LCD controller. This chip on board on the blob of epoxy is the LCD controller. And just next to it are also test points. Let's see if we can make sense of the communication between the microcontroller and the LCD controller. Solder some wires to the test points, connect to a logic analyzer, and voila, we have a trace. Step 3. Reverse the LCD protocol. We have three signals. CS, which is low when data is transmitted, VR, which is very periodic, and data, which is sporadic, like data would be. We've already seen a synchronous protocol that matches these characteristics. SPI. CS is chip select, VR is the clock, and data is mosey. The only difficulty is to identify the clock phase and polarity. But you can figure it out by checking the clock state when there is a transition in the data line. And if we now look at the trace, we have some decoded data. Instead of a logic analyzer, let's use a microcontroller which has SPI decoding implemented in hardware. This will help us watching the data stream in real time. Now we need to figure out which bit encodes which segments on the LCD. One way would be to note what is displayed on the screen and correlate it with the decoded data. But this is very tedious. Instead we will use a property of SPI. SPI can be used for full duplex data communication. This means that we can send data at the same time as we receive it. And if you know that the small white wire near the test points, this is what it is for. I just had to cut the trace going to the LCD controller. The test point is still connected to the microcontroller, which normally sends the data to the LCD controller. But now I can inject my own data to it using this white wire. Using the microcontroller, I just sent data with only one bit enabled at a time. This way I can easily see to which LCD segment it belongs. Now that we have the complete mapping, we can decode what is actually displayed on the LCD. And this way, I was able to get the measurement values. Step 4. Transmitting the data. Next, I want an easy way to get the value. I don't want to connect a computer using a cable and read the values from a C report. The alternative would be to transmit it over the air. We've already seen the NIF24. It's a very simple and cheap device for wireless communication. But the receiver also needs such a module, which is not practical. We've also seen the ESP8266, which provides Wi-Fi. But either it requires an existing network it can connect to, or you have to connect directly to it and you lose internet. Finally, we have Bluetooth, which we haven't used yet. It fits perfectly our needs. It is cheap, has enough bandwidth for simple measurements, and phones as well as computers can easily connect to it. We will use an HT05 module. The microcontroller connects to it over serial, and the module also advertises a serial port. Easy enough. Note that we will use Bluetooth Classic, which has a profile specified exactly for that. We don't need Bluetooth Low Energy since we will have a power supply. And this is how the device looks like. We have a microcontroller which will switch the meter on by simulating a button press and decode the measurements, Bluetooth to send them out, and a voltage booster to provide the 9 volts required by the meter. Now we can read the measurements remotely using a smartphone. Step 5. Enforcing the sound level. The advantage of having Bluetooth is that I can also use the module as a master. It will then connect to the slave meter as a computer or phone would do. Now this microcontroller can read the sound level over the air at a distance. It will display the value on this 7 segment display, but it can also check if it exceeds a set threshold. And if it's too loud, it will switch off the power using this cable. It is connected to a power strip. I've modified it and put a mechanical relay inside. This allows me to override the switch and cut off the power. Let's see it in action. Here the clapping is very loud, which the enforcer shows and after some time it switches off the power. The button is just to reset it and re-enable the power. 
And with that, the project is complete. We have a sound level enforcer and we can ensure that the neighbor will not get angry. Enjoy!